You, you say, I did that. Sure. Your hand is not gonna go to court. You are gonna go to court. Sure. So what I'm saying is, you actually have to attribute it to one nature, uh, no, no, one, one or the other. To, and to be simple, not necessarily. So, well, for example, you stab me. Yeah. Right? You stab me mm -hmm. with your hand. Yeah, absolutely. It wasn't with, with your toe, right? Absolutely. So in the same capacity, we can attribute any actions that Jesus does to the person of Jesus. How? For example, Jesus walked on water. Yeah. The ability to do so was given by his divine Yeah, but, but, his, but his person consists of two. So, okay, it was divine. It was one person. And then, yeah, that's, that's my point. Yeah. My, my point is now you have to reconcile that. So you have to reconcile what, yeah, but that doesn't solve the issue. It, it doesn't. I'm, I'm telling you, when is he doing one and when is he doing the other? So for example, look, let's go, no problem, let me give you a critical point. So here's the critical junction. But you asked two questions. So you asked the first one, then you asked the second one. No, I'm continuing on with the first one. So when is he? Yeah, that's still a continuation. And I'll, I'll bring it to the critical junction. So when it comes to atonement, when it comes to self-sacrifice for the purposes of atonement, is his divine nature taking it upon the sin, or is his human nature taking the sin? Right. So nature is going to do things, persons do it. Yeah, and I'm trying to tell you his person consists of two natures. That's correct. Okay, so now, if his person is taking on the sin, his personhood consists of... Did you basically... Here, I'm going to get to, just cut to the chase. Did a human being die? Uh, or yeah. did, did, did God die? Uh, so, so God died, yes. Okay, so God died. So the divine nature died? No. Okay, see, see, this is what I'm so, saying. So it's difficult that, to... No. So, God yeah. dies on the cross, right? And that's fine, we can say that. And the reason we can say that is because nature is one of the things that perform actions, people do. So... What, when, what makes a person? Huh? When you say... Oh, I don't mean to cut you off person, again, but you're saying terms so, that are interchangeable. Uh, so when you no, say people... Natures and people are not interchangeable. So, for example, that tree has a nature, but it's not a person. Okay, but yeah. this person is a human being. Sure. So human being a, consists yeah, of human a human being. nature. That's correct, yes. And now you're saying this person is a divine being. And that brings me back to the original point. Yeah. The issue is you don't know who took on the sin, the human being or the divine being. If you're saying the divine being took on the sin, in my mind's eye, a divine being can't die. Okay. And you're saying God died. Yep. Okay, and I'm, I, I'm having a difficulty reconciling sure, that. Sure. Okay, okay. And so again, I will reiterate that okay. when an action is committed, it is not done by a nature, it's done by a, by a person. So, Jesus, we can say, is a divine person. And this is kind of what a person is. Something that exists that has intellect and will. Okay. That's how come you can't call, like, you know, a cat's person, right? So, so there's, if I'm understanding yeah. you correctly, there's two wills. Yes, two wills. Oh, you have a human will and a divine will. Absolutely. Inside one person. Yes. Interesting. Yep. Uh, and then... That can only be done by God. Okay. So, and why do you say that? Yeah. Why do you say uh, that? No, no, why do you say there's two wills? I'm sorry, just to uh, clarify, uh, why do you say there's two because wills? Because wills are things that are proper to a nature. So when you have a human nature, you also have a human will and vice versa with a divine nature. Okay, great. So if there was two natures and two wills, yep. which will and which nature was praying to the Father? Right. So we, we say that, for example, when he talks to the Father, right? Um, he talks to the Father uh -huh. by his person, not by his will. And I think that's something you keep mixing up. The person is doing the action, not the will doing the action. But brother, you told me that um, there's two natures, yep. two wills. Yep. One of those wills had to have a volition to actually conduct the action to pray. Okay. Okay. And I'm asking you, which one of those is it? Right. It can't be neither, and you can't say person, because then you're going to say both of them had the same will. Right. Now so, you're going to run into an issue where the human will and the divine will are one. And you just told me they're two. Uh, no, not that, that they're one. Simply because you agree with something doesn't make you one. We can have the same opinion on, on for example, our favorite snack, but that doesn't mean that, 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 we, that we, have, uh, we have the same person. Oh, we, thanks, we, we, we simply agree with something, uh, that, that uh, we simply agree with a topic that's external to ourselves. Yeah, so, I think that's a tough, to, prayer, it's a tough analogy, man, because it, it we're not... It be, because prayer... So, for example, there are things that you can do as a Muslim that align with the will of Allah, right? But that doesn't yeah. make you an Allah one. Yeah, so, but I can never do anything against the will. Well, you, you can... No, you can't. You can it's sin. not possible. Okay, well... No, 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 it's within his will for us to sin. Oh, okay, well... Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. That, that's problematic in a, in a completely different way, but, but we'll, we'll I don't get see how, that. but okay, yeah, we can. Well, basically, if I, if I, if I, like... So, oh, okay. It's not no, problematic, bro. It, it's, it's very problematic, depending I don't, on I don't how, see how you how. interpret it. Okay. So, to make it very simple... Okay. Are you saying that if 
Allah does not will a thing to occur, it cannot. It will never occur. happen. It will never happen ever. And see, this is why I love so, about being sincere and like so. Just I, I don't like, and I love this conversation right. because now we're actually making beautiful progress. It so, can never happen. So, if I kill you right now and start it was within eat, his will. eating your innards, it was within his will. Allah wanted me to do that. No, 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 not want. What he wants and what he willed is completely different. See, this is the thing. When you will some, when you're when you're talking about Allah Subhanahu wa Taala's will. It's all the possibilities of what can happen. Right now, you could literally gouge my eyes out, do all the you know weird things. Uh, not saying that that's going to happen, man, but hypothetically. I, 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 hypothetically, that's all within his will. But like, let me give you a very concrete example. Can you jump 10 feet in the air right now? No, without some kind of assistance. Exactly. So it is within his will that you cannot do it without some assistance. It's it's as simple as that. So you're, you're, the way I'm interpreting this, what you're calling Allah's will is just possibilities yeah absolutely if it's if it's outside of his will it's not in the realm of possibility so I his, mean, his a, a better uh, way of, of, of describing that why uh, why need why of, of his will yeah because it's actually uh, at least for a christian position right we say that will is something akin to like um ability to action a thing mm -hmm. right so it, the way you were describing it at first, I assumed you were saying that the things that occur are decreed by Allah to occur in that way. So if I yes. was to eat you, that's because Allah wanted me to do so. No, 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 but not you're want. implying that effectively Allah's will is just a, a, uh, a infinite number of when, uh, potential actions yes. that a person can do. Yes, so when you say want, you're, you're adding the element of desire in there. And that's not okay. Allah has nothing to desire? No, I, I, I can't, I'm not gonna use that type of language. Okay. So like, I don't know what's in his, so like for example, did he want to create? Yes, because we're here. He had a choice of create, not create, sure. and we're here. So I can comfortably say he wanted to create. Okay. But if, uh, if uh, he wills for something to happen, it's within the realm of possibility of it happening. Now you have a choice. So what he wanted was for you to have a choice. And it's, it, otherwise, you're just gonna say, hey, life is completely useless and it's, we have no choice. And Some uh, it's, it's, are it's, occasionalists and that's what they believe. Yeah, I'm a compatibilist, man. I, I think that, you know, uh, he gives us all these possibilities. He gives us guidance towards good. I think the more good that you do, the consequences is more good and, and better guidance, stronger guidance, tougher exam, you know, to stay on top of the dean, to stay on top of the truth. Like, for example, when somebody does perpetually good, like, let's say, for example, when I think of, like, Surat al-Fatiha, right? And when we recite that, uh, you're asking to be on the Sirat al-Mustaqim, right? The righteous path. But to me, when you're reciting the Qur'an, you're being elevated. So you're trying to get closer to God. And the more of the Qur'an that you know, the more of the teachings of Islam that you know, you have more to lose if you start to go on the opposite end. So for example, if you end up murdering somebody, God forbid, or you end up falling off the bandwagon, you are gonna fall a great distance compared to someone that just now accepted Islam and is making a, a mistake of ignorance or a mistake of something that they're, you know, like a cardinal mistake that just didn't quite hit their head. So my point being is the more knowledge that you have, you're gonna be held to that different standard of account. And the more guidance is given to you by the will of Allah, but also your test is increased because the more you have to refrain from doing things. So all of that is within his realm of possibility. All of that is within his will, but the choice is yours. So is there some kind of compatibilism between Allah's will and what he wants? So it's like the what creation. Do you mean? What do you mean? He oh yeah, 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 absolutely. He tells us in the but Quran he wants us that, to do good. But before that, he wills to create. He doesn't yeah. want to create, then will so. He will so and then doesn't. Right? No, I think, so what's, what happens is classically, I think this is a human thing. It's not even like a Christian thing or anything like that. I think as human beings, we tend to look at things like linearly, like he was here and then went there. I don't think that, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala works in that framework. Like to put it simply, I don't think he has to think about creating and then he creates because he knows all possible outcomes and all possibilities. And like you said, he's not time bound, he's not space bound, and he's looking at things both, all from past, present, and future. So it's really like tough to use that language. Rather, um, 
so that's why I don't like to say, oh, he willed it first, then he took the action, or he thought well, about it first, and then like, he... Logically speaking, because for us, we can say that, for example, we believe in two main processions in okay. God. The procession of, of the uh, of the will, sorry, of the intellect, okay. and then the procession of the will. Okay. So that, and that's, that's what we call the Son and the Spirit. Okay, and okay. the reason why, logically speaking, we say that the Son emanates and then the Spirit, despite okay. them not being bound by time, yeah. is that logically speaking, before you can will something, you have to know things. Okay. So the intellect comes and then the will. See, I, I, I see what you're saying. So in that sense, in creation... I totally see what you're saying. I would say that you have to take it even a step further, that you have to will the knowledge first before the will to existence. You understand what I'm saying? How and it's going to get way deep. You don't know anything. Well, because you have to start somewhere. There has to be an I, an I what, so for I mean, lack of a better word. Come first, and then the will see, see, this is why. Know all the possible worlds. Yeah, and that's why I'm saying it's not appropriate for us to step into what God's mind is because we simply don't know. Well, God's mind is logical. We have to agree with that. Yeah, but logic to what standards? If you're logic in this realm, and then you go to logic in the quanta realm, it's completely different. So right. logic in his realm is befitting his majesty. Right. And I can't speak to that because I'm not in that realm. Right. So logic in the I quantum just, realm doesn't get thrown away suddenly. It there changes. Is, well, no. There's just different assertions that we have to make in the quantum realm. For example, like things that are paradoxical. Yeah, you would consider them illogical in this yes, realm. Right. And the logic changes over there. But, You've seen The Matrix, right? Yes. Yeah, so it's part of the quantum realm. You're just like, there's no way a guy could be bending bullets and dodging things at light well, speed. He, he could if like gravity works differently, but that, that's what, but that's what I'm saying. That's the logic, the laws. Because we already know that in different parts of the universe, gravity works differently. Yeah, but but I'm trying to it's tell you, logical. it's I'm trying to uh, what I'm trying to say is to hypothesize what's in his realm. It there's no benefit for me. There's no benefit for you either. It's, so, it, it, it would be like me trying okay. to get into your head. I, ca I can't even do that, man, so, let alone like to get into God's head, for lack of a better word. You've heard you know? about like, the paradox of the rock. Can God make a rock so heavy you can't lift? Blah, 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 blah. Sure, yeah, it's a silly question. But. Right, but then like the way that you're, you're putting this, it's almost possible that maybe if you believe in like different uh, degrees of logic based upon what dimension you're in, then I can say it could be possible that within Allah's dimension, he can do that. No, because uh, what we're, you have like assumptions and certain presuppositions. Like for example, if we go with the rock but can't lift, you're assuming that there's physical strength involved. You're assuming that the rock is made of some type of a material form that you're familiar with. You're assuming that uh, up is up, you know, and it can just keep going deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. There's all these, like, you're assuming that the rock has a molecular composition, like an atomic mass. You're assuming all these things. So it's, Within it's... Allah's realm, uh, I don't know. know. I don't speak of it. Well, for I just example, don't. we have the scriptures of it. There's yeah. water, there's a throne. Yeah, so again, whatever, it's not like, it's whatever, not like our water. Sure, sure. So, so whatever, whatever reality the water and the throne has, I'm going to imagine the rock has the same reality. Yeah, but you don't know what the what reality the water has. That's fine. And so, so that's why we can't imagine the rock. Is, well, well no, we, we can imagine the rock, right? But How? A, a rock with, I'm going to say a rock with similar properties to what the, the arch of the throne has. I can't, I can't speak, I can't speak to that because now what you're saying is, tell me about the composition of the throne and I just don't oh, know. No, I, I'm not asking for it. I, I'm just saying that I am not appealing to things that are necessarily physical. But there are things in heaven or within the Islamic concept that at least sound in some sense to be physical. But if, even if they're okay. metaphysical thrones, okay. can there be a metaphysical rock that Allah can't lift? If no, he I has get, a different operation of logic than we do. I don't use that type of language, bro. Because like, Do's it's... No, no, I... There's no point in going that way. Because so then, I'm saying like, it's not gonna change... It's not gonna change what's required of me by God on what I'm capable of doing. Like for example, it would be silly for him to set that type of a requirement to obtain that type of knowledge when he himself in the Quran says that when it comes to that realm, the realm of souls, I, he only he knows. So the requirement is, well, alhamdulillah, removed. Yeah, but the scripture also gives certain parameters, right? So like, for example, what you're talking about is things that are in that hadith and things that are within the Quran. But then both of those contain parameters, brother. So when they contain those parameters, he tells us at certain points, stop. Otherwise, you're just going to be going off of conjecture. And I'm saying that 
there's no benefit to either you or me to talk about the conjecture the conjecting elements like it's cool it's cool because we have that you know it is it is it 100 percent is it he's so. yeah it is nowhere does he say hey you need to know what the throne is but nowhere. he also doesn't say don't question the throne either. I mean, yeah, because, he, he but he tells us not to question the realm of souls. And if that belongs in that realm, then what? He said, you gave us but a little bit of knowledge. Well, so, in, in, the, in the divine cosmology of Islam, okay. the throne is above the heavens. Yeah, but it, okay, so what? So it's, it's, not, it's not actually contained within the realm of souls. Now, how do you know that? Because you don't know that. The idea is that Allah sits above his throne. Okay, so? Which is above the water, which is above the credit order. Yeah, you're going to have to prove that. That's you're, that's, meaning, that's no, what you're going to have to prove that it's not within the realm of souls. You're going to have to prove all well, of the, um, and, and I'm if, saying... If it was within the realm of souls, yeah. remember earlier when you agreed with me that God is in time bound. The realm of souls is within the credit order. The, so again, you're conflating this material, terrestrial, created. Now again, I understand what you're trying it's to created. say. You're trying to say that it is created, and yes, yeah. absolutely. The only thing uncreated is the Creator Himself. Okay. And the, so, and the Quran, well, again, you're gonna don't do this, bro, because this is not. This is not. We can go down that route, bro, but. You're just going to end up like all, all these other conversations where they're regurgitated. And like I said, I care about your journey and I care about you as a human being and I care about being upon truth. No, I, I, I think we, we're having a beneficial conversation, but I'm saying like ask questions as to, you know, that, that things that you can actually, like for example, um, things that would get you closer to the creator on what he actually revealed. Like I, I think I think that's where the conversation. Alhamdulillah, bro. I yeah. love him as my prophet, as my messenger. I love him as the Messiah to the Jews. I love him as, you know, he's. Uh, I love him as a truth speaker. I love him as a, as a, an example for the people of their time. I I, I love Jesus, bro, and um, I'm glad you do too. So I'm glad we have this thing in common. What do you love about him? I love what he taught. I love that he taught that there's only one creator. I love that he attributed that. John 17, 3. That was, that's probably, when I was reading the Bible, that was the most impactful verse to me. Have you ever read John 17, 1 to 10? Yeah, I have. I've and read, I've what read. Did you, what did you think about what I What I did notice when I read the book of John, bro, is I noticed that there was ample times that Jesus was called a prophet. Which so these are, yeah, it, it is fine. So now, but so. You know, you, I can call you like a man. Yeah. Is that all you are? Yeah, you if might it, be a husband, a father, right? There's contextually speaking, things. contextually speaking, what was going on during these verses? And I'm not going to explore like every single verse right you now. Should, actually. Well, there's no need for me to. Do you want to look at John 17? Okay. I think it's important. What would you like to look at well, about in, it? In verse 5, he talks about um, having pre-existent glory with the Father. Great. We, 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 all the prophets had pre-existing glory. How All does that work when they don't pre-exist? They do pre-exist. You so so for example, um, you know when it says that he created God in His image. Okay, the way that I understand that. Created God. In uh, his excuse image me. Created man. In, uh, excuse. Thank you for that. Uh, he created man in His image. I view that as he created man as in His imagery, meaning that God. And again, I'm not imposing this. This is just my human understanding. Is that he has a mind. He has the ability to. Um, think like volition he has the ability to conjure whatever he wills right and part of that is the imagery of man two arms two legs two ears a nose two eyes some hair sometimes lacking you know mashallah you got good hair For now. so I'm a little jealous we'll man see. but uh, my point being is that they were all and even you were in pre-existence in his imagery in his knowledge so you were sent at a particular time, which is today, right? Today you would be X years old and you'd be living X life. But in his knowledge, you always existed. So... I don't think that's a good idea. Okay, so if that's the case, then you would have to prove how God is not all knowledgeable. Okay. Because you had to have been in his knowledge bank, knowledge bank, just for the simple terms. And then you were manifested in time. So Simple terms. God doesn't have a knowledge bank. Okay. Right? So what does he got? So the, this is another problem with, within uh, the Islamic understanding of God.
false knowledge, right? Because the problem is within Islam, you guys give a lot the opportunity to learn new things. Oh, we don't. Uh, you, you do actually. There's a, there's a very popular argument about Surah 3, um, verse 140, where, where it says that Allah may know, or, or, or um, it's, it's rendered in a few other ways, but one of the ways is Allah may know. That the term is, I think, like, like a uh, Wali Yama or something, is, is the idea. And there have been arguments about how or not Allah's knowledge works as a result of that verse. I don't hold that position. I hold the position that he's all knowledgeable at all times. Meaning what exactly? He, that there's, there is no, there is no thing that he doesn't know of, that he's not aware of, or possibility that he doesn't know of, or he's not aware of at any time. Yeah, how, how could you be all knowledgeable and learn? That would just be silly, man. Okay, well. I just, I, I think that would be crazy. At least for me, you know, I'm like, Fair enough. That sounds nuts. I, I can show you some Quranic verses if you want to see where Allah sort of talks in this slightly ambiguous way. Like when he, when he talks to Moses and tells him, go to Pharaoh, perhaps he might listen. You know, perhaps it all sounds like yeah, maybe. That's, but brother, that's rhetoric. That's, rhetoric. That's a, yeah, it's a form of rhetoric when he's saying, so like for example, um, imagine if I, let, let's say when you read that, when you say that, I think of, you'll see. I already know, but you'll see. But so, so perhaps the, the issue with that is um, that is a almost Americanized English expression. That's funny, man. Does it exist in like ancient Arabic? Yeah, think about that. That's Does a question. That's a question for you, not for me, because I don't have an issue with it. Well, you're, so like you're, you're in term, so for example, like um, in the Bible, right, or uh, even in the Quran, we have that term of um, like uh, the rich man, or it's, it's more difficult. For a rich man to oh yeah, to get to the eye, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Camel, yeah, yeah. Needle. We yeah. don't use that term anymore. We use things like, oh, when hell freezes over, or when pigs fly. Right, 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 right. right. So yeah. how do you know <laughs> that that yeah. perhaps in the Arabic is rendered in the same way as you yeah. see? Yeah, because um, you have to look at it comprehensively, right? So like, if you hold the position that he's all knowledgeable, then by default it will it will give you that context cue. So if you understand and accept that he cannot learn anything more, there would be no other alternative by default. That's how I would view it, bro. It, it just simply taking the, that position of like, because if you can add to a cup, then it's, it's, it, it's in need of something. It's, it's, not, it's not fully pure. It's not fully, you know what I'm saying? And what, you, know, what I, you know what I mean? What I would then do is like, for, for lack of, 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 of uh, time, I would encourage you to have a look at the debates okay. around Surah Al Imran, verse okay. 140. Inshallah, and and bro. You, you, you'll see the uh, you again, you should see it around. But okay. people do debate this oh, around inshallah. what God's knowledge is. So for yeah. us, we hold that God is pure acts. Okay. Right? So God doesn't have any potential, right? He doesn't okay. have any past or any future. Okay. And when he looks at his creation, he looks at it all in one glance. Okay. So effectively, uh, past, present, and future are in his purview all at once. Cool. Yeah, and, that sounds and, great. And his knowledge isn't one where it can increase or decrease. That sounds because great. Because in all possible worlds, we hold that God knows things that are created by understanding the form of the thing without actually becoming the thing. That, that sounds right? great. Yeah, that, to, that's great, man. I don't believe... So when you just talk now about pre-existing in the knowledge bank of God, we don't hold that because that, that, that ascribes that there was some passage of time before we were actualized that God had us uh, in, in, in his thinking before he made us and we don't hold that. Yeah, so... Uh, so that, that's why that's when, interesting. When, when I said with Jesus, right, that he has pre-existing glory with the Father. Okay. Pre-existence okay. implies without creation. So a couple things come to mind, and, and so you, you why, really, um, you know, God bless you for, for, for that, bro. So, so check this out, uh, a couple things. Uh, one, if you hold to the view that he doesn't need to uh, take form of a creation to either have an experience, to, understand it. to yeah. understand it, right? Then uh, if that's the case, then he would never have to take human form. So he doesn't take human form to understand us. Uh -huh. He takes human form to redeem us. Right, so uh, let, me, let, me, let me put a clarifying nuance on there. 
he would not have to take human form to understand sin and how to rectify it. No, he doesn't take okay. human form to understand sin either. He takes human being, oh sorry, human form okay. for the express purpose okay. of, of saving us from sin. So yeah. th there is no necessary like learning of the mission uh, when he's here on earth. He already comes with the understanding of the mission. Okay. So he's not learning anything to help him on the mission. Okay. So curious then, why didn't he do that earlier to the previous generations if your position is that yep. the way that he understands sin yep. is to actually... Redeem our human nature. Yeah, in, 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 yeah. but through uh, incarnation and sacrifice. Sure. So, so the, for the sacrifice portion, uh -huh. um, like I looked at up earlier actually, when you talked about reading, for example, the Torah and yeah. seeing the consistency uh, with sacrifice in the New Testament, okay. the Torah is all about sacrifice. Uh, uh, the Levitical laws talk endlessly about different weekly, daily, monthly. Yeah, but not human sacrifice. Right. So we're not saying uh, Jesus, that's why we, we talk about Jesus in this motif okay. of him being a lamb. Okay. Or the sacrificial lamb. Okay. Or Passover lamb, right? Okay. Now, spiritually, we, we, we told in Christianity that the things that happen physically in the Old Testament have like a spiritual rectifying in the new. That's the explanation behind Jesus saying, I have not come to abolish the law, okay. but to fulfill it. Okay, great. So fulfillment means completion. The law is pointing to the Savior and salvation, first with the Jews, and then as Abraham was promised, his descendants, the Jews, would be a light to all the nations. Okay. And all would come to worship the true God because of the promise that God had made to Abraham. Got it, got it, So got it's it. Abraham, the Jewish people, and the rest of the world. Okay. That's how it works, right? So. But why did he change? Huh? So why did he change the way that he actually delivers right. the redemption. Because so before it used to be animal sacrifice, then it changed to human. Yeah. And now let me add this caveat as well. If you read the book of Ezekiel, yeah. the third temple is going to be built. Yeah. And then Jesus is going to be actually offering sacrifice for himself. I don't so why did it go? Uh, Allahi, I'm not going to mess with you on that. Like, bring that up, no, no, no. I'm, we, we, feel free. Check yeah. out, uh, I think it's Ezekiel 44 does um, the and Lord onward. Will sacrifice the Lord? Yes, it does. That's okay. the issue. And so, but here's the, here's what I would rather, right. uh, I'm not going to stick well, on that. I kind of want to finish that. Finish Please. The whole, the whole but it right. went from animal to human, yep. back to animal. Why? If he already understood sin, why would he now all of a sudden need to change how he's getting rid of it? If you have a citation for the book, I can read it for you. Yeah, Ezekiel, book four, uh, chapter 44 onwards. I want to say it's like from 44 to... We can have a I'll get it for you. I, 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 and, uh, I can yeah, bring it up I, I, for you in a second. No problem, but, but no problem. The understanding is that there is a, in the New Testament, you're seeing these things fulfilled spiritually. So what you're, what you're having there isn't necessarily just a mere human sacrifice. What you're having is the, the lamb mentioned in the Old Testament being fulfilled in the person of, of, of uh, Christ, who is a person okay. of God. And so because the lamb only offers um, what you would call like um, temporal bereavements of, of sin. Mm. There's weekly, monthly, annual sacrifices that have to be done on a recurring basis. The Lamb of God, Jesus, is a final and ultimate sacrifice, mm. right? The sacrificing of the Son, similar to the motif mm. of the binding of Isaac, right, for right, example, right. in the Old Testament. Right. So that's why you're seeing that. And the thing that's being done there is the need to repair a broken human nature. Okay. It was perfect for what it was supposed to do in the beginning. So God is perfect in a way that God is perfect. And human beings were made perfect in a manner that would allow their nature to fulfill the telos, or the purpose of what God made them to do. We lost that perfection, that human perfection. Mm -hmm. And since we've lost it, that's why the world suffers, and that's why we make each other suffer. So what is promised to us is that it will be rectified at some stage. But why would they, if, if he was the last lamb then, why would they rebuild the temple and then continue the sacrifices so, for the purposes so of sin? Remember how Jesus in the New Testament uh, says to the disciples that knock this temple down and I will rebuild it in three days or I will raise it again in three days. So we actually hold that the physical temple being talked about in the Old Testament is actually spiritually fulfilled in Christ. So Christ is the temple people will come to. 
of worshippers. <clears throat> but he himself is going to be making sacrifices for himself as well. Right. So you're reading it in a literal sense. No, well, it's what it's. Are, well, that's what it says. Well, there, are what, many, there are many things that are said literally in the Old Testament that have a spiritual fulfillment. So we have like multiple ways in which we uh, understand Old Testament prophecy. Some are literal, yes, but some can be moral. They can be analogical. But this is New Testament, and this is Ezekiel. Yeah, yeah, so, okay, for example, let me, give, let me give you an example, right? So, Moses, in the wilderness, at one point, lifts up a serpent, okay. a bronze serpent, right? To heal the Israelites, because they have been cursed with serpents by God, okay. for turning their backs on God while they were in the desert, right? Okay. Now, this sounds like, okay, fine, so it's some weird, like, what, like, pagan No, 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 yeah, stuff, yeah, yeah, right? yeah, for sure, yeah. Actually, funny enough, that's the reason why you have the snake. Yeah. on the back of ambulances in the yeah. story. Yeah. Now, Jesus in the New Testament tells us that until the Son of Man is lifted up like Moses picked up the serpents in the wilderness, then those who look upon him will be healed and achieve eternal life in the same way that people looked upon the serpent in the wilderness and were healed. Mm -hmm. So you have these two like random events or one random event and it being somehow supposed to fulfill in the new. So Jesus, for example, is not a bronze serpent. Okay, a stick. so was, was there a fulfillment then? is put on him on the crucifixion. Right, and, and, and I'm fine with that. I understand yeah. that from your worldview. Yeah. Now, Continuing on with that, yep. if it was fulfilled, yep. why rebuild the temple right. and why so, continue the sacrifices so, for the purposes of removal of sin? So because I, it was already fulfilled. So what, what I would say now yeah. is, again, I haven't read the verse. It's but, okay, no problem. It's, it's, a, sounds, it's a great one where we can continue I'll, our... I'll check it out. Yeah, for great. what it sounds like to me, yep. I can argue that this is fulfilled Okay. number one, the death of Jesus, okay. the resurrection, okay. aka the building of the third temple, okay. and the sacrifice that he's committing in, in what we describe in Ezekiel, okay. is the sacrifice he made on the cross. Okay, so, so no, it specifically way. says that he's going to sacrifice a bull for, so it's going to be, th and that was my original question, yeah. is why is it going from animal to personhood, I'll respect that from your worldview, personhood, all the way back to animal. And that's the that's the contention that I, I, I have. Think the issue is you're, you're you're literalizing that because, for example, but that's what it says. So Christians, for example, don't hold that a third temple structure is required. For example, so then you're going that. against the the Bible. Well, we're not going against it. We we have a proper understanding of what that, that terminology means. So in Luke 24, 27, okay, Jesus um, is shown to unroll the Torah or Tanakh for mm. his disciples. And he gives them, in the Greek, he gives them the proper interpretation of what these things mean. So where is your reading it and looking for a literal one-to-one -one with what is in Ezekiel? Often, there are many things in Ezekiel that are hyperbolic. Yeah, but I'm not. I'm talking ideas. about the crystal clear text. Right. It has no ambiguity to it whatsoever. Well, and then it says that it will... It will, he will sacrifice yeah. for himself as right. well. So and that me, means he's not sinless. Tell me why that has to be uh, fulfilled physically when I'm giving you examples of things that are physical how would a bull? How would a bull not be physical? So if a bull represents, uh -huh. for example, a sacrifice for the atonement of sin in accordance with the Levitical law. Yeah, but they physically sacrifice them. And then spiritually? Yeah, spiritually they were hoping to reap the reward. Then, yeah, uh, is that showcased in the New Testament? Yeah, but That's I, a different action. Yeah, so that my, my point being is the physical act was still conducted. And then the spiritual reward was sought after, right? I mean, that's the whole point, right? In you the know? old. Yeah, yeah, new, yeah, right. So this is a new... Action isn't required. Right, right. For, so for I, example, think about it. Uh, the Gentiles, right, are not uh, forced to sacrifice animals to God if they don't want to. Yeah, but understand, he's gonna when they rebuild that temple, he is the high priest. So he is going to be the one that is gonna be standing at the sepulcher, and he is going to be saying, "This is the sacrifice," and he is going to be sacrificing a particular thing. But Jesus himself is the temple. No, yeah. he is the. I can show, no. you, can show it to you. Okay, and I think this is where we have a difference. Okay. Um, which again, I'm so happy to have that difference what, of opinion. What did Jesus mean when but he, he said, how is he physically going to be in the temple if he is the temple? Exactly. Right? Okay. So, so there that, has to be a high priest. No, he is the high priest forever. No. Right. You're, but you're. What you're doing is you're. There's no physical structure. I'm going to tell you why. I, 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 I'm going to tell you why you need to look into it, and this is with all due respect. Okay. 
because in Ezekiel it actually talks about a physical structure. And tell me why, tell me why that can be fulfilled in a spiritual way. It, it, uh, what do you mean by in a spiritual way? So a, a, because a, 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 a there needs to be a high, way. okay, because when you read the text clear as day, okay. a physical high priest will be there, otherwise there's no point in rebuilding the temple. How are you going to rebuild the temple if Jesus was the temple? How are you going to rebuild Jesus? Oh, so that happens when he dies and resurrects. No, I understand. Which is why he says, knock this temple down okay. and I will raise it again. So who's the bull? So the, the bull is, is a sacrifice. And, and it's a physical he, sacrifice. And Jesus himself was the sacrifice on the cross. No, so he you're, you're, you're the cross blending the two, brother. And that's how, how, how we are. I understand. You're, but you're blending, you're blending the two. Well, there, it was a tradition a at a reason. point. I did. Why it has to be I did. I did. Because so what you're doing is you're appealing to the text, and you're saying the text is implying a physical building. So why am I not? No, it's seeing... concrete. It's not even. It's not implying. It's. It is. It like legitimately saying that it is going to be a temple. It is going to have pillars. Okay. So. So. For example, let's table that for just a second. You believe in a second coming, right? Yeah. So is the second co is Jesus still the temple? Yes. Well, how are they going to rebuild them? So that's what's really happened. Okay, but there's a second coming. Yep. So why would they be building that physical temple if the second coming is happening? So, funny and then enough, who's the bull? Funny enough, actually. So this is where no, it gets convoluted. No, notice that it's not Christians attempting to build a second temple. You might have some. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. You, you might have some radical American evangelists, but <laughs> it's a Jewish. Why are you being on the Americans, man? Give them a break. I, I'm not. We're I'm in London. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just saying. So you might have some Jews, for example. Okay. You want to like what you're essentially doing, fulfill the prophecy yeah, okay. physically, yeah. right? But then there's a problem with like, they're not really having... But they don't believe in the New Testament. No, no, exactly. Right? So it's Ezekiel uh, New Testament. No, they don't care about what Ezekiel, Ezekiel says. Old, but you're asking me a question, why are they building a third temple? The reason is they are literalizing it in the way you want. That's fine. Okay. Because they lack the context of the New Testament. Okay. That's why. Okay. And oh, by the way, if you read Ezekiel, I remember if you listen to Ezekiel, right? Ezekiel is like a very like, um, it's, it's a very like spiritual book because a lot of the things that he sees in his visions, right, are like literally out of this world. Like look up Ezekiel's wheels, for example, if you want to have an interesting read on, on that. In one of the verses, it talks about these wheels that come out of heaven that are on fire. And the wheels have eyes and the wheels intersect with other Yeah, wheels. that can all be very metaphoric and that can oh, all be very so like. Why is that metaphoric? the temple is it? Because you're you're asking for something that can actually be a physical structure and then you're asking for well, why like, can't rules of fire come out come out of the sky? Well what stuff does that happen? Well they they can. Yeah, yeah they can. There's there's nothing and, stopping and also, it from I, happening. I believe in Ezekiel he describes like the coming of like the new kingdom and in the New Kingdom, he describes these like uh, gemstones that are on the floor, like paved in the entire floor. Yeah, okay. Do you expect that when the New Kingdom comes, there will be like legitimate gemstones like on the floor? I don't know. It, they it, could it, be. It, it could be a metaphor for yeah, oh it wow, be. it will be shiny and grand. Right? It could be. Yeah. Yeah, very well could be. So we understand that in the Bible, not everything is meant to be uh, read literally, because for example, yeah. like in the in the Old Testament in the Psalms. Um, God is called like a rock and a shield, right? And like a mighty man of war. Yeah, I don't think he's a rock or a shield or a mighty man. And then we understand. You know? Yeah, one hundred percent. One hundred percent. I got no issue with that. Okay. I've got, I've got, I've got so no issue with that. We have basically means by which or hermeneutical means sure. of interpretation sure. that we use for the purpose of the Bible, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yes, we can make up our own, but it's better, in my personal opinion, if some of these interpretations can be found somewhere in like church history. Mm -hmm. If you read any like like history. So if you read like any like commentaries on like Daniel or, or Mark or whatever by any other font or whatever, mm -hmm. yes, there are some things that you might see that are not completely accurate, right? However, it's good to see if your understanding is like the old understanding. I think when you step into your worldview, of course, it'll be whatever your understanding is. I guess Sometimes the, the can be wrong. yeah the disc and again that's fine. It's just. The disconnect that I'm having yeah. is how it's going from one to the other, back to the other. And then the root of the issue you're, you're, is... You're literalizing it almost as if that you're like a, um, like a Tanakh-observing Jew without the Old Testament. That's, that's, that's why I think you're confused. Well, then wouldn't it be fair that if it was revealed to the Jews that we would understand it the way they understood it? So, 
Like that, you know what I mean? Are you talking about um, Ezekiel? But who Is it, if Ezekiel is interpreted by the Jews as literal, yeah. then why not? Why not? It, because um, we hope that the greatest teacher of the Torah isn't a particular rabbi that you can name from the Jewish tradition, but that it is Jesus. Because he is the one who gives the scripture in the first place. He is that angel of the Lord who um, Moses talks to at Sinai, who gives him the commandments. Yeah, that's kind of strange to me, man. Right. But I'm not a Jew, so you don't have to worry about that. Oh, oh, oh yeah. You Jews, know? Jews have their own means of interpretation, sure, absolutely. Yeah. But then there, there are certain inconsistencies that uh, they fall into, certain things that they they don't necessarily want to like, dis, like, uh, discuss or throw to the wind. Like, for example, that angel of the Lord I, I talked about. Mm -hmm. The angel of the Lord is a very interesting figure in the Old Testament because it basically does the actions of God and bears the name of God. And so the way that, that they interpret that is like, I find it interesting but unsatisfactory. But hey, they, they won't care what I say. Yeah, they won't care. They won't care what I say either, nope. you know? Yeah. So I guess, I mean, it seems like, uh, like you had mentioned, we have a lot of those commonalities. I think, I know we talked about it a little bit a while back, but we were talking about the knowledge bank of yep. God. And I said, for lack of better word. Okay. But the idea is that you are also in that pre-existence, meaning you were in that realm of souls. So... I am created. Yeah, you are created. Right? Meaning yeah. that I didn't have an existence. Yeah. And then now I do. Yeah, exactly. Right? Exactly. So me being created has no bearing on the knowledge of God. No, it doesn't. I, I, I agree you, with you. In our conception, God sees our entire reality in a yes. singular glance. Right? Yes. Now, before I am created, or, or we hold, at the point of, of conception, that is when the soul of human being is created. It doesn't flow from a dimension into... That's from your worldview? Yes. Okay, great, great, great. It doesn't great, great, flow great, great. from one dimension into no another. It is created in an instance as well. Got it. So, because, uh, interestingly, the, the idea of us like, existing in a different realm before we enter this one is actually like a, a platonic idea. Okay, well, um, how do you... I don't believe in, like, um, in the uh, presence of, of, of the soul. So the soul com comes from the world of ideas okay. into the world of... Um, you call this world the, like, uh, like the, like the world of yeah, the I know. It's been a while since I've read his works too. Yeah, I uh, and, let and, me, and when we come in, we forget everything from the world of right of um of like perfection. And yeah, then we have to do philosophy to remember it again. Yeah. Okay. So, how do you explain Adam? What about him? He was obviously created before the Earth. No, he's, he's the last to be created. <laughs> So Adam was never Sequ sent... Sequentially, he was the last thing to be created. So, so do you believe that Adam was not created in the heavens? No. You believe he was created in, on earth? In the garden, yes. Okay, where is the garden? The garden is no longer accessible to human beings. No, but where is it? Is it on the earth or is it outside of the earth? So, this is actually very, very interesting. So, the garden isn't necessarily a physical location. The garden is actually, or if you look at it from the garden to the temple to Jesus, the garden is supposed to be an intersection where the divine and creation actually interact with each other. So a different realm? Not a different realm. Some place in this realm that we will go back to at the end of days. So if the idea is that it's a space where God can interact with humanity in an almost direct fashion, which is why you hear verses in Genesis like God walks the garden in the pool of the day, that kind of thing. Okay. Then the garden is closed off to humanity when Adam and Eve are kicked out. The Bible describes that God places swords there. Uh, uh, to guard against anyone entering because in that garden there is the, the tree of uh, knowledge and evil and then the tree of life and death. Mm. Now, that intersection again then gets copied or the idea gets transferred to the idea of a temple. But now, not everyone can go in. Only the ritually clean Levites can go in. Okay, so see, the way that we understand it in Islam yep. is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created, you have the other realm, the heavens, right? Adam and Eve were created there. Before them were the angels. Okay, before the, bef and, and also before humankind, you had jinn. Yeah, it's a little better, right? It got a little dark. Um, so the idea now is that two things. One, in his knowledge, all possibilities existed and all true possibilities uh, 
started to take place. Meaning, at one point in time, there was no angels, and then there were angels. At one point in time, there was no jinn, and there was jinn. At one point in time, and this is again just for simplistic terms, not saying in time, but at one point, okay? Then Adam and Eve, first Adam and then Eve from Adam, right? And then we were brought down to earth. But from Adam and Eve, all of our souls were created. So that's why we have that we come from the loin of Adam, meaning that all of, the, all of mankind, all of humankind was in that realm already in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's knowledge for lack of better wording. So we have a real existence before we're here on earth. Oh yeah, absolutely, and we're going home. That's the whole point of wanting to get to Jannah, man. You wanna go home, man. You don't wanna stay here. If we exist, because this is very, very platonic, yeah. if we exist in a reality, yeah. in Allah's mind, before we come here, do we do anything while we're there? Don't know. We, there's a realm of souls and we don't, like I said, we don't delve into what so we did, what we didn't do. It's not important. Is your soul then eternal? What do you mean by eternal? Like, As in it's like uncreated? No. Your soul is created. Okay. That's, not, that's not what I said. So like I said, there was a point in time where there was absolute nothingness, only the creator. Well, then and then he... Not yet. Oh, so we were so we had angels first, okay? Or there might have even been other creation that we're not aware of. Okay, and, and just, just just to check, at this point we don't exist in the mind of Allah. At this point, no, you always exist in His mind. You you always exist in His knowledge. No. So so Allah's knowledge you're, wasn't created. I don't understand how you're like. So I, you're you're you're. You're um, going too much into metaphysics and you don't need to. Well, hear me out. Allah's knowledge isn't created. Yes, if I understand. If we exist there, are we yes. not then not created too? No, bro. Okay, let me try to simplify it for you. The abstract idea, okay, like a blueprint. A blueprint. Is it still a creation? So you know how earlier I asked you, did we exist in a real way? You said yes. Yeah, absolutely. We existed in a real way. We, so then, because you're, you're skipping a step. Okay. You have the knowledge bank, which is a form of existence, for That's lack of a better word. Existed. And again, you're, going, you're delving too deep into the metaphysics, bro. So, and I'm trying to explain to you. How we got here? Because I, I told you that Jesus had preexistent glory. And then you said all prophets did. Yeah, they all did because right. they were all in the knowledge bank. Right. Prophets, he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew who was going to be a prophet or so not. So, the, um, the claim of having Christ in glory, we really think that to be a divine claim. Yeah, that's your worldview. That's great. I, I don't see that to be, I, I don't see glory to be as a form of divinity in my well, worldview. So, Jesus is saying in, in Matthew 17, 5, that he had glory with the Father. Yeah before the world was. Okay. So it appears that, you remember I asked you, what are we doing in this like, you know, abstract mind uh, uh, that, that we're in, right? And you said, you know, we don't know. Well, I don't know, so, I don't know somehow, what I'm Somehow, Jesus, going by your view, appears to have memories of this time. No, man. Uh, you see what so, you're doing? There's a couple how, things. How would he claim yeah, but you can get it through before the world was, for example? Yeah. Again, I don't hold to the Bible claim to be true, but right? You, you but I will, I will give you, I will give you the courtesy of stepping into your worldview. Okay. Now, stepping into your worldview, it could be revealed to him. So it could have been revealed to him that he had glory in the past. Now, where you're conflating the issue is you're saying glory equals divinity, and I'm saying that that's not the case. Um, God says in the Old Testament that He shares His glory with no one. So that's right. Why. Now, I understand. Do you believe now that? You're, now, you're, now what you're doing is you're saying, if he doesn't share his... Okay, well, if you believe that, mm -hmm. then if that's the case, Jesus can't have divinity because he doesn't share his glory with anybody. And that's what I'm trying but to say. He's sharing it with Jesus, so therefore he isn't a separate person from God. No. But he's a person of God. No. See, this is when you're trying to bring, a, you're trying to bring upon the Trinitarian worldview. Well, it's, and it's I, right there. Brother, uh, you're creating so many yarns that I have to untwine. So let's take it step by step, okay? okay so God first off, 
Okay, great. Does God ever lose his glory? Uh, no. So how did Jesus lose his glory? He doesn't lose his glory. So what happened? What did he do? Table by, it? Uh, no, by virtue of him taking on the form of a servant, right? So He um, emptied himself. Yeah, yeah, so, so, so he lost it. No, he didn't lose it ever, right? What's empty? So Nothing. So again, the, okay. the terminology there, it, the glory of God isn't something that can be tabled or emptied, right? How isn't or is? Isn't, is not. So how did he empty himself? Right? Because it's, it's from God's direct nature. The emptying is the description of him coming as a human. So assuming I, the form of man and a lower station, than the glory that he has when he is the second person of the Trinity, that process of him walking around as a man that can be perceived is the idea of him uh, letting go of his glory. Yeah, and I can't well, reconcile that from my worldview. I can see it. How you, so, I can see why you see that because you need. To with the hadith about Allah's veil. Okay, yeah, you'd have to give me the reference. Uh, I, I suppose it from memory. Wisdom 179a. If you, if you can read it for me, then I can. You know, I don't think I've ever actually read that one, yep. but I'm happy to take a look at it with you. One second, sorry. Sure. So, if I pull it up real fast. Yeah. But effectively, my idea here is that Jesus is similar to this idea of, of this veil. Which one am I reading? Uh, that one. This is, this is the Hadith material. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. So it says, The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was standing amongst us yep. and he told us five things. He yep. said, Verily the exalted and mighty God does not sleep yep. and it does not benefit him to sleep. Yep. He lowers the scale and lifts it. Yep. The deeds in the night are taken up to him before the deeds of the day and the deeds of the day before the deeds of the night. His veil is the light. In the hadith narrated by Abu Bakr, instead of the word light, it is fire. If he withdraws it, the veil, the splendor of his countenance would consume his creation so far as his sight reaches. What's the issue? So, no, it's not an issue. It's, oh, an issue. Okay. it's a comparison. The idea is that Allah has this countenance, you know, like his face, his identity, his glory. And it's something so powerful that it needs to be shielded from creation. Okay. Otherwise, it will be destroyed. Okay. Right? So now, Jesus has the, uh, the same thing, but by being, you know, able to of a trinity. However, by taking on the form of man, when he looks Peter in the eyes, he doesn't destroy him. So that's our understanding of the, of the glory uh, um, being shed when it comes to a human being. It's not being yes. like, taken away or destroyed or tabled. Simply it comes in the form of a human, and you can interact with him. Yeah. Again, I don't see how you're drawing the comparison. Jesus is the veil. Jesus is the veil? He is the veil. The, the veil you just read here, Jesus is the veil. But that veil that you're reading is not even from this world. Neither is Jesus. Uh, but he was here, manifest. Right. And you're saying the only reason why it, the manifest was there is because he was functioning as the veil? Uh, no, the reason why we were able to see him and the idea of him shedding his glory is because he's functioning as the veil. Okay. Actually, Paul and, even calls and that's why that's why I'm not seeing how you're drawing that comparison because one the veil shields us from Allah's countenance and without the veil Allah's countenance will destroy creation mm -hmm. Jesus is talked about as being the uh, image of the invisible God so he is that very veil that uh, and when he says he who's seen me has seen the father uh -huh. he is acting as that very veil as that very thing by which you can get a glimpse of God without being destroyed. Yeah, but brother, I'm, I'm still finding uh, it's strange that you're taking a hadith that's talking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that a veil being there for him, and now you're now, ex I, like, do you accept the hadith to be true? So, like, like are, you, are you Muslim? Like, this, I don't understand. This is, this is very funny uh -huh. because it is my understanding that there are many things that Islam takes from Christianity that it can't quite explain, but only reference. I can give you a whole list if you want, but this is one of the things. The idea of God, of the veils and God. So why stop halfway, bro? Why not read the Quran and accept the rest? Like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm well, a bit perplexed. Like, right. why why are you so, choosing, like, like, why are you picking and choosing when you now, it. you're, but because, yeah. hear me out real quick. No, no. Because here's how I'm understanding it. No, no. You're saying, Okay, there was a messenger, 
and I accept what his hadith is, but I'm just gonna ignore the rest. No, I and that's why are you doing that, man? No, that's not my view at all. Oh, well then, so, then you can't use the hadith no, to draw I, a comparison, bro. I can use the hadith because why? my claim is that there are things in Islam that are borrowed from Christianity, but are not fleshed out in Islam. That, that's my claim. And you're gonna use Christianity to flush them out? Yes, because Christianity has the fleshing out. Why? Let me show well, you. Islam doesn't need Christianity, bro. It's it, the other it, way around. It does because if- I'm not example, understanding in, how. In the Quran, multiple times, it was something along the lines of, has the story of Moses not reached you? Okay. Right, talking to you would assume the pagan Arabs, right? And then okay. it gives like a small glimpse of Moses' story. Okay. But then where's the rest of it? It's well, the there's no, <laughs> bro. Okay. <laughs> so a couple things, man. Yeah. First off, there's many a times when the story of Musa alayhi salam was mentioned uh, throughout the Quran, and each of them can give a, a, contrib a contribution to some additional detail. Uh, however, um, this is the beauty of the Quran, bro. Is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us exactly what we need. Nothing less, nothing more. And to say that... The hadith prove otherwise. What, what, do you, what, do you, what do you mean? The presence of hadith prove otherwise. Yeah. It appears that you need more. No, brother. The, see, now you're adding another ball of yarn. Okay, fine. The, okay, okay. Like, That's okay. I'll entertain it. No problem. I, I can see that you're kind of sincere, but you have these things that really need ironing out. So, okay. The hadith, uh, in the Quran, it tells us to follow the Prophet It tells us to look to, at him for a way as guidance. And the, the hadith is a comprehension uh, and a deeper understanding of elements of the Quran. Alhamdulillah. So, you you have uh, the first teacher of the Quran, bro, was the Prophet so of course we're gonna listen to what he has to say. Not only did he receive the message, but then he showed us how to best approach the message in the best manner possible to get the best results possible. So the, the thing is like, hadith is also revelation, bro, but I'm, I'm telling you that what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said is complete and part of his sayings is to go and look at the Prophet meaning what God told us includes, you have the Quranic speech, which is the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the direct words. Then you have the inspiration, which is the hadith. I'm aware of these things. Okay, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. This is just for the benefit of anybody that's listening. So now... Can I, can I add one thing for the hadith? Uh, yeah, there are ahead. some hadith, so not all hadith are revelation, but there are some that are, and they're called hadith qudsi. Uh, okay, so again, you go with the authentic, you go with the authentic hadiths, and I'm not going to debate hadith with you because I'm not a muhaddithin, um, and there's a direct science to this. So if you want to, you can definitely consult people of knowledge on that stuff. I wouldn't think they would call it revelation. Okay, well that's your that's your take. There's certain, you know, that's that's your take. That's and you're, you're entitled to your opinion. Uh, and I, I'm fine with that if that's uh, meaning I accept whatever you say to be your position. If that's your position, great. Hadith Qudsi are different from my understanding. Yeah, well, these are the. The, the Yes, so, and again, to, but to say that we are, to say that the Quran is incomplete yes. or that it's missing something, yeah. that is a very, uh, that's a dangerous thing. It's, I, I don't think so. Um, okay. Adam has a wife in the Quran. Okay. What's her name? How what? It doesn't say that in the Quran. Okay, so what's the problem? So if the Quran had everything we need to know, no. <laughs> why do we need okay. to refer back I'm gonna to the explain Bible to you. To so yet another ball of yarn. Uh, so let me explain. So why do you need to know the name of Adam's wife for your salvation? So are you saying that the Quran only contains what's needed for salvation. Because I, yes. I, I don't think that everything in the Bible, for example, yes. is required for salvation, right? For example, knowing- How would you know what to do, bro? Huh? How would you know what to do or what to believe in? How would you know? So I don't think that everything, every story, because for example, the Bible contains history. I don't think knowing the history has any bearing on your on your salvation. Yeah, but, in, the, in my but the, opinion. the core concepts, right? But, so like, for example, the Quran, yeah. the more that you read it, the more that you engage in it, mm -hmm. alhamdulillah, it builds your iman, it builds your faith. So when you read for the purposes of understanding and for the purposes of trying to locate the truth, 
you're going to receive that guidance that's necessary. You're going to get that opening from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So point being is, here's what you're saying, and I don't mean to cut you. What I'm trying to tell you is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us everything comprehensively what we needed. Part of that comprehension is actually the hadith which are authentic. So now, for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us his book, which is the Quran, and he gave us his messenger. So you have to look at it holistically. You can't say, uh, we're going to take one without the other. It's just silly to. Now, why are certain stories repeated? Or am I going to have to know the name? Or why is this detail missing? Uh, you, 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 okay, no problem. You are labeling it as missing, but the intent where is it for, for, was for it to never be there. So for example, the intent of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was for Hawa to not be in there. You saying that it's missing, meaning that he had an intent for it to be there, and for some reason now we're going to question the preservation. And that's a whole other topic. No, I'm not going to get into preservation. No, 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 I, know, I don't uh, think you will. I think reliance is I don't think you will. a big conversation. Yeah, absolutely, because yeah, for sure. If I am a pagan Arab yeah. in the 7th century, yeah. and you say, you know, you are the prophet, and then you're telling me things like, have you not heard the story of Moses? I'm going to say, who the hell is Moses? Right? Yeah, okay. So, in my opinion, when the Quran says things like that, it is banking on the idea that there is already a story of Moses that exists somewhere, and what the Quran is doing is just summarizing the story that already exists. Okay. Because, for example, you, you believe that Moses is like born in Egypt, that he kills a man, runs away to Midian, comes back, frees the Israelites, yeah. this is the promised land, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then all the details about like what what happens mm -hmm. and in what sequence this has happened in are all in the Bible. Yeah. But how do you know that those details are correct from the Bible? So, so when the Quran is referencing them, it's referencing. It's not them referencing as the details; they don't exist. Correct. They don't. No, 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 no. See, this is uh, another issue. And, uh, you know, like, I, I love you for the sake of God, bro. Um, and I can, I can see that you're, you're genuine in trying to understand these things. And, you know, may Allah guide all of us, bro. Uh, so, nowhere in the Quran does it say, look at the details of what was said previously. Rather, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's why I said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us exactly what we need to know and nothing more. The details that you have in your Bible, you hold them to be true because you believe in the Bible. The Quran does not hold them to be true. The Quran, How can you tell? Because, because, it, because it's, not, it's not included in the Quran. So, so then what that tells me is that the author didn't know about that information. No, what that tells you is the author, you, the, the safest and most intellectually correct thing to say is the author did know about the information, but chose not to include it. I don't see why they would, because it would make the story in the Quran a lot more fulfilling. No, man, because now here, this is what you're doing. You're applying your way and saying, I know better than God. Is the full story better than the partial story? No, again, it's it's what you're looking at. You don't, you're, a couple things, bro. One, you're under the assumption that you have the full story. We're, Two, you're under the we assumption. We have a full story, I understand. For sure. I understand. So we, we know about Moses you have, Moses you don't have, you don't have, that the you don't have the story. You have a story. So do now, you, there, there is no better alternative. So I'm going yeah, to there is. There is. Yeah, there, there, there absolutely is. Is there, there absolutely a more is. full story of Moses there out there than what's There absolutely in the Bible? is a better alternative. The what alternative is? is that whatever you have is not necessary. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I'm trying to tell you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed exactly what he wanted to reveal. Nothing more, nothing less. So, so the I alternative example, is, like, the alternative is, yeah. you may, you may. Yeah. The alternative is that exactly what you need, the spoonful of medicine is, 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 is complete. There's nothing that you can add to it or take it away to make it any more beneficial. I disagree. Okay. For this reason. The, so the Quran doesn't, for example, mention the Ark of the Covenant. I assume you're familiar with that idea. Okay. Are yeah. you at all? Yeah. Right? yeah. yeah. There's, there's a structure that the Israelites have in the desert well, with Moses yeah. that contains the Ten Commandments, uh, a ball of manna, you know, the fruit from heaven. Yeah, yeah for the Quran, sure. Okay. Uh, the staff of, uh, of Joshua, I think, and then, yeah, I think that's also in there. Okay. And also, the presence of God itself. 
Okay. It's in that box. Okay. Made of gold. Okay. Okay. They transfer it. It goes with them. It enters the kingdom. It stays in the temple. The Quran doesn't mention that at all. Why, why does it need to? Why is that exactly? Yeah, why does it need to? Exactly. The Ark is the very thing that gives the temple the identity of having God's presence. Okay. It's, a, it's even a Jewish idea okay. called uh, the, the Shekinah, the, the dwelling, okay. right? Of the presence of God. Yeah, yeah. Now, that idea, physical in the Old Testament, in, in the form of a box, is actualized in the person of Jesus. Okay. By not mentioning that in the Quran, you miss the connection to Jesus who calls himself the way, truth, and life. And this is again from your worldview. So that, and we're trying to tell example, you. Like a series of things. No problem, no problem. So, a, a couple, to salvation yeah, right, right. So, it doesn't because uh, what you're doing is you are saying it is a requirement. You are saying it is a requirement for you to know the Ark of the Covenant. It is a requirement for you to believe in this temple. It is a requirement for you. And I'm trying to tell you it's not. Islam does not depend on Judaism. It does not depend on Christianity. It is a comprehensive religion that does not depend on anything but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what He chooses to reveal. So, I, I'm trying to tell you, take a moment, step out of your worldview, and recognize that what you're looking to do is you're looking to lay down puzzle pieces. And I respect that, bro. You're a man of investigation. You like to see things in conclusion. Okay, I, 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 I respect you, man. I really do. So now, the, on that same journey, right, you have to accept what you have with the flaws that it has. And in the same way that you're building those bridges to avoid the pitfalls of the flaws that you have, based on, it could be pure faith or it could be just a love for whatever you have, okay? This is part of your examination, brother. Part of your examination is that when you acknowledge that there is indeed another messenger and there was another revelation and that revelation is telling you what all the other prophets did that were critical to salvation. So when they all submitted to one God, when they all prayed to one God, when they all asked help from that one God, it didn't require any temples, it didn't require any, and then all, you know, the Ark of the Covenant, it didn't require any trinkets. It is incumbent on you to research that wholeheartedly with the same investigative zeal that you have for the last revelation. And you will recognize that the path is a lot easier, bro. It's a lot easier than you're making it out to be. Because oftentimes when I talk to my Christian brothers, man, they love to, um, uh, and they take it from a position of good faith, at least the good ones do. They love to have a thread that's uncut. And I'm trying to tell you that the thread that you're working with has been cut hundreds of times, but you've band-aided one part to another to make your section work. And I'm telling you that the thread that we have is complete, uncut, doesn't have any flaws, and still encompasses elements of your thread which are true and eliminates the ones which are cut and led to falsehood. So in order to obtain salvation, it's not from the old that what we need it's from the new that we have that is preserved and i encourage you to again with that same zeal bro that same like passion is to look at it because you'll find that it's it's really simple man i mean i'm telling you it's really really simple all polemics aside bro like remember both of us here are we feel that we're standing upon truth and you know i always like to ask my christian brothers like why do you want me to accept christianity uh, it's the only way for you to actually get eternal life. There's no other way. Okay, and I want you to accept Islam because I feel the same, and I feel that I'm upon truth, and There's you feel that you're upon truth. Right. Life. It doesn't have to be just like being a Muslim. And, and 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 you know, we want well for one another, bro. I've got no skin in the game to to try to you know one up you or to win an argument. I don't care about that, dude. My my account is with my creator. Okay. The same thing. Your account is with the creator. But I'm telling you that I'm standing upon certainty and I'm showing you my evidences and reasons for that certainty. And I've explored both sides and I genuinely, genuinely encourage you to explore this side. I don't think you've explored the Christian side well enough. Okay. That, that's, that's my issue. Okay. Um, because, for example, if you say that Islam doesn't rely on Christianity and Judaism. It doesn't. Why are like 99% of the prophets you talk about in the Quran all Jewish? They're not. They're not. Uh, they're, uh, besides the, they're not, they're not, bro. They're all Jewish. No, they're not. See, this is the thing is you have a, 
And again, God bless you, bro. But you have a, an understanding that is, huh? No, they're not. I'm telling you, there's no one that you can list from Adam all the way to Muhammad Aisalam. There's no one that was Jewish. No one. He's not Jewish. If you're talking about nationality, if you're talking about origin, okay, he was a Palestinian Jew. But if you're talking about what his, again, what you're doing is you're conflict. I'm, I'm trying to help you understand. Do you see what I mean? These were all Muslim, bro. They were all Muslim. They're, they're, I'm trying to explain to you they're not, and I'm repeating myself. They're not, brother. None of them are Jewish, man. None of them are Jewish. By faith, he is not a Jew. By nationality, by origin, he's a, a Palestinian Jew. Well, if, if by faith he wasn't a Jew, yeah, he wasn't. why does he only quote Jewish scripture? It doesn't matter what he quotes, dude. And again, you're looking at it from your worldview. If he was a Hindu dude. and he was only quoting Jewish scripture, how does that help his case with Hinduism? And again, same thing with Hinduism, it's both a nationality and a place of origin. People say, oh, I'm Hindi but they're not actually like from Hind. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So like, don't do that to yourself, bro. It's, you have to look at what he actually did, what his actions did. His actions were submission to God. He was a Muslim, bro. He was a Muslim. It was only until the labeling came from other people, man. We can go eat. No, Bismillah, bro. It's been, a, it's been a good conversation. I think it's a good spot to end. We have things to check out for all sorts of stuff. Are you busy? Yeah, I don't know. I'm going to catch up with the brothers. Uh, we'll see. I've been talking to you. It's been, it's been a long time, alhamdulillah. You know, I hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides us both, bro. And, you know, Fair enough, then. You know? Fair enough. Um, I guess the last thing that I'll, I'll show you is, this is what I meant, by the way. About okay. The, the whole bill idea. This okay. This is in 2 Corinthians. Oh, from 12? Uh, from 12, yeah. Okay, okay. This is about the whole bill idea. So this no one can talk to me who licks the toilet bowl. You cannot, you are not uh, on a level to talk to me. Oral sex. Yeah? I'm going to assume that's what I'm going to say. So, with. Yeah, but I'm not Okay. Uh, where, where do you want me to stop? Uh, so 15? Just, just the, the, as long as you, you, you've sort of seen, yeah. So the, the idea of, of this veil and how it is actually taken away in Christ. Okay. So the, that's what I'm trying to show you. The okay. perception of the veil is something that's only um, within Islam. It's in Islam. Well, no, we'll explain. Sure, sure. And I think the actual explanation you'll find here in the actual Bible. You know, that, that very hadith that you gave me explained it. But it didn't explain it on, on Christ. It the, explained it on Allah the, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The, the issue would be like, if the veil is a thing that can block Allah's countenance, how can a created thing block the magnitude of God if it's not like in some way divine itself? Right, and, and that's... So we would say we can because Christ yeah, is God. Yeah, and I, I understand that's from your worldview, so he needed to take on that veil in order so to, to be... be uh, right, by human and, and, and from us, he's just a man. So from our worldview, he doesn't, you know... He doesn't need that. Now, your scriptures will support your worldview. But you quoted from them. Uh, mm -hmm. Joseph 17, 3. Yeah, I, I understand that. But then that. before 3 proceeds 2 and 1, and then yeah, following you can 3 proceeds 4 and 5. Yes, you can read it all in context, and it won't change the fact that he explicitly calls the Father the only true God. That's the issue. And I don't want to open up another can. I mean, I'm taking you away from your food, man. No, At this point, uh, it's haram, I, bro. I am not hungry. I am not hungry. You know, it's okay, okay, man. You know what? Let me show you. Can I show you, like... Just, okay. just email me on it. It's give, okay. give, me, we'll give me four minutes. Is that cool? I can't. I, trust me, two hours no. is a long time. And look, I'm here for one day. Okay. One day. And then I have to head back. Jesus says that all that belongs to God. I will God. let you have the last word. Bismillah. Sure. Go ahead. Uh, John 17, 6. Uh -huh. Jesus said that everything that belongs to the Father is his. Okay. Any thoughts? No. All I right. don't have any thoughts. Cool. Yeah. That's all right. Right then. All that the Father has is mine, and therefore I said that I will take what is mine and declare it to you. So, okay, cool. Yeah. So, you know, that's, that's fine. That sounds kind of be able to cover for me. Okay, if I saw all, all Allah had is mine, that's like crazy. Okay, all right, thanks, man. Bless you. All right, God bless you too, man. Unless, I don't know what the heck to do with all this stuff. <laughs> uh, um, crazy. That's a lot of cameras. Yeah, subhanAllah. SubhanAllah. Yeah, well, you can go I hope I don't have to click a bunch of buttons, but. No, I think the camera is for you. Okay. How am I supposed to find everybody? Yeah, this is why. Give it to him. I'll take mine. I'll take this mine. I don't know what you mean. Okay, that's mine.